In this video, we look at the process of how you balance or what we call maintaining equilibrium or even your posture. So this also happens in your inner ear, just like hearing, but the hearing part of your inner ear is the cochlea over here. So there's the cochlea, the, the typical curly look of a snail's shell that you can see over here. But when we're dealing with balance, we're dealing with the rest of the inner ear. So actually, we're not going to be considering anything that is below the orange dotted line. So we're not considering the cochlea at all. We are only dealing with the semicircular canals and the vestibule underneath. So on this picture over here, there's the vestibule in pink and the three semicircular canals. Now, one thing I haven't shown on this picture is a branch of the auditory nerve. You can see it's one nerve. This part of the auditory nerve comes from the cochlea, so we'll take impulse about hearing, but this part of the auditory nerve comes from the vestibule. So we actually call that the vestibular branch of the auditory nerve because it's coming from the vestibule. But for this video and for the matrix syllabus, we do just say the impulse are transmitted along the auditory nerve. We don't have to identify the vestibular branch. But I do not have this shown on my diagram as I'm wanting to write on this side. So let's get started. There's no mention of ossicles in this process because that, those vibrate so that you can hear. Balance and equilibrium is more about the movement of fluid that is within the vestibule and the semicircular canals. So when we look at the picture, what I've drawn here is I've drawn the blue fluid on the inside. So the black structure is actually bone, so bone that is in your inner ear, but on the inside there are membranes that are filled with fluid. So just remember you had the perilymph on the outside and the endolymph in the blue on the inside. And it's inside the fluid, inside the blue fluid, that the receptors for balance are found. But there are two very important different parts here. You have the three semicircular canals, obviously drawn very roughly here. I'm trying to show that they are in three different planes. So one is going upwards, one is going sideways, and one would actually be coming out of your screen towards you. So those semicircular canals, I'm pointing at all three of them, at the base of those semicircular canals, you have these swollen bits that you can see them in the black bone area, but you can also see them on the inside. Those are called ampullae. So ampullae or am ampullae, that is where the receptors are found for balance or one type of balance. And those receptors are called cristae or cristi. So just like when we did the mitochondria, we spoke about cristi. Um, those and pulley, these swellings here, have Christi, which are what we call your dynamic equilibrium receptors. So I know this is maybe a stretch, but I remember that C, Christi, goes with D for dynamic, so C, D. And that is A as well, so ampullae, A, C, D, um, all at the top of the alphabet. And the swollen area underneath, the base of all the semicircular canals, is this big roundish structure in the background here, which the whole thing is called the vestibule. But if you look inside at the blue part, there are actually two smaller parts in there. And I always include all three in my answer because you never know which one they want. And that those smaller blue parts are called the sacculus and the utriculus. So I know, terrible words. Who writes these things? But... You must practice saying these words out loud, the sacculus and the utriculus in the vestibule. And inside here, inside the sacculus and the utriculus, are the other receptors, which are called maculae. So you have Christi for your dynamic equilibrium and maculae for your static equilibrium. So again, I know it's maybe a stretch, but I remember that M and S are closer together in the alphabet along with the sacculus, utriculus and vestibule. Those are all at the end of the alphabet. Um, so just to understand the difference between static and dynamic equilibrium. So static equilibrium is when you're kind of sitting still. So the way we actually say that in a question is you look at the type of balance or equilibrium that is maintained when you change the position of your head. So when you're sitting at your desk, you look down at your notes, you look up at the teacher, you look down at your notes, you look up at the screen or wherever you're sitting. But your body is not moving. You're only changing the position of your head in relation to gravity. So looking uh, up, down, left, right, etc. So your body is stationary. That's why we call it static equilibrium. Whereas this dynamic equilibrium would more be when you're playing sport or going for a run. So if you are a rugby player or a soccer player and you want to 
dodge past someone or sidestep them, that would be dynamic equilibrium. So in the question, we would always refer to changes in speed and direction. So you're going fast to slow or slow to fast and going right to left. So your whole body is changing speed and direction. Yes, your head is included in that, but it is involving your entire body. So that's important because those semicircular canals are in these three different planes to each other. So no matter what direction you go in, the fluid in at least one of those semicircular canals will move. So if you dodge forwards, at least the fluid in one of these semicircular canals will move and stimulate the receptors. If you dodge sideways, the fluid in another one would move and stimulate the receptors, the Christi. Um, whereas if you're just changing the position of your head, it's the maculae that are stimulated by the movement of the fluid. And remember, anytime you have a receptor, the Christi or the maculae, their job is to convert the stimulus into a nerve impulse. So now you've got the background. You know you've got two different types of receptors, the maculae for your static equilibrium where you only change the position of your head and you know where those maculae are found, sacculus and utriculus in the vestibule. Or if you're changing speed and direction, you have the Christi, which are found in the ampullae at the base of the semicircular canals. So depending on the question, this is the part you need to suss. What type of receptor is it because of what type of balance is it? Then the rest of it is a standard answer depending on, it doesn't matter what type of question you have. So you have a receptor that converts the stimulus into a nerve impulse. That receptor you've either identified as the Christi or the maculae. But the point is you convert the stimulus into a nerve impulse. Remember, that's key with the nervous system. Then... The impulse travels along the auditory nerve. So the impulse is taken along the auditory nerve, but very, very important here. It goes to the cerebellum. Because remember, hearing is a sense, so it is interpreted by the cerebrum. Whereas the cerebellum is responsible for maintaining muscle tone, so your posture. And the last mark, because often the question asks, explain how balance is restored. So you've got to say this last point, very important. The cerebellum sends impulses to your skeletal muscles, not just muscles, what muscles? Cardiac? I don't know. But to your skeletal muscles to restore balance. That last point is a key point. So your ticks would be allocated looking at the stimulus being converted to an impulse, impulse transmitted to the cerebellum along the auditory nerve, Cerebellum sends impulses to skeletal muscles to restore balance. Those are four given marks. Whatever type of balance or equilibrium it is, the key is identifying what kind it is. So let's look at how they word that in finals. It's a very straightforward question. Describe how balance and equilibrium is maintained by the ear when a person changes his or her speed and direction. So already I'm thinking speed and direction, that's dynamic balance. So I know it's changed in speed and direction. So this is me sidestepping someone. So it is dynamic balance, which means the receptor, I remember CD, is the criste, which I found at the ampullae, at the base of the semicircular canals. So I'll say they're semicircular canals. So I'm just writing down what I know. I'm identifying what type of balance it is. So now if you look at the memo, not all of those things will be marks, like dynamic balance won't be a tick in the memo, won't necessarily need to say ampullae or semicircular canals, but I would always rather write too much than too little. So first tick here, the cristae are stimulated. You've got to say they're stimulated. The stimulus is converted into a nerve impulse, which is transported on the auditory nerve to the cerebellum. Impulses are sent to muscles to restore balance. So even if you've got those last four, you get four out of five, even if you didn't get the criste right. So it's absolutely key that these four marks you write every single time, no matter what type of balance or equilibrium question you are asked.